Uh, we want to welcome you here, but tonight a special welcome to Dr. Guptal, who is the president, as most of you know, of IS. And he's taken time out of his very busy schedule, and it is very busy in particular at this time of the year, to visit our class because we're talking about a topic that he has a lot of interest in and has spent a number of years working on curriculum in the area of integrating uh, faith and learning, which is the topic, the entire topic for this class. Okay. And so he's consented to talk to us. Now we have some interview questions that we want to ask him, but you may have a chance to ask some questions as well. And so I'm going to get started with the first one. I'm, I'm really interested in uh, the setting for the germination of this idea. Where did it come from? How did you get this idea into your, into your head? It took a lot of work. You, you produced a lot of very good material. How did it begin? Um, this happened during the time when I was education director at the SSD. Uh, and uh, we have about a hundred secondary schools uh, in, in the division and as I went from school to school from one country to another um, I realized that unlike uh, some of the countries that I had grown up in and I was acquainted with uh, we did not have Seventh-day Adventist textbooks for most of the subject areas. In many countries, the government mandated certain curriculum uh, things. And uh, as we would go from place to place, uh, the question we would always ask uh, the, the teachers in the school and so on, what makes this school Adventist? You know, what, what is their Adventist about this school? And uh, I, I can, you know, it's embedded in my mind one time when I was visiting a class in one of the countries and I turned to the teacher and I said, what is, what is this class? What are you teaching? And the answer was, I'm teaching evolution. And I said, you know, that must be really uh, a really challenge, you know, as an Adventist teacher, you know, how do you go about making it Adventist? And her answer was, oh, I wish I knew how. Uh, she said, uh, at the beginning of the class, I read a Bible text uh, on creation, and I told her that I believed in creation, I told the class that I believed in creation, and then we've been teaching the textbook. And I thought, this is a Seventh-day Adventist school, we are teaching evolution, and the teacher clearly says, I don't know how to make this class Adventist. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, if it's true for this subject area, it's probably true for a lot of areas. And I thought, wow, wow, how do I make this class Adventist? And so when I came back to the office, I was talking with some of the other people in our office in the education department there, and I said, you know, before we're too critical of them, we have to really ask this question, you know, how can we, how can we answer that question too? What are the Adventist values? What are really, what are the things that we as Adventists want those kids to learn in these different subject areas? How do we decide as a Seventh-day Adventist uh, education system what are the Adventist things that we want to teach in that science class or in that English class or in that history class or in, in, in that Bible class? <laughs> uh, so that we don't get the idea, here is the Bible class and here is all the rest of the stuff, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, our Adventist part of this school is that Bible class. Uh, in fact, I went to one school and, and you will not believe this. I went to this one Seventh-day Adventist school, and when we asked for their schedule of classes and everything, uh, they showed me the, the, the list, and there was no Bible class. No Bible class on the, on the list. And, and I said, you know, w w when do you teach Bible? Oh, well, we try to, ha to have something in each of the classes, you know, kind of a, a morning worship. And I said, don't you have any Bible class? They said, well, we used to, but 
some of the non-Adventist parents complained and they said, you know, it's such a busy curriculum, the kids go such a long time that they just wish that we would leave that out because the kids needed to get home. And so we cut it out. And I thought to myself, wow, somehow or another we missed the core. And so we began to it's a long answer, I'm sorry. We, we, we really said, we have got to really sit down and say, what, what should be, what, what are the Adventist values we want to teach in each of those classes? How can we do this? We can't make Adventist textbooks for all of those countries because they change them every year. The government curriculum goes, what can we do? And so... We sat down, we brainstormed, and we said, okay, what are the values? What are the Adventist values that we want, we, we want to convey to our kids? So let me ask you, I think you're going to the next question. <laughs> what are the major components, and why did you choose them? Or just give us a brief description of what is in the program. Okay. Um, well, we started writing down all the values. And we just brainstorm from everywhere and, you know, different ones. And there's a lot of values that are very similar. You know, one word can, you know, there's several different words sometimes that, that convey a similar thing. And we wrote down all of these things and so on. And it was just this big group of, of, uh, of values. And uh, so we said, We've got to organize this somehow. This is just too nebulous. This, you know, this, you know, all of these things. And so I says, is there any way that we can group these together, somehow get them organized, you know, put the similar kinds of ones together? And, and that's when we, we started having these different groups, the, the religious ones, the biblical ones, the individual ones the relationship ones, the time ones, and so on and so forth. So that, is that what rebirth stands for? And that's how the name rebirth finally came along, is that it was the, the first letter of each of those different sections. That's what, what the rebirth thing. And so we kind of thought that was interesting. We talked about that. Some people says, well, rebirth kind of sounds like a... a uh, you know, an Eastern religion of some sort, you know, where you're coming back. And I said, well, let's imbue it with the special Adventist values and so on, because this is the kind of thing we want to change people, you know. We want them to, to experience, our students to experience that rebirth experience. And uh, so we grouped them into these different groups. And that kind of got my head around it, you know. And, and those groups, as we looked at them, we realized that those really answered some core questions of life, really. They, they answered core questions of life. And, and, and for people, as they, they consider those things, as young people, even adults, as they consider these things, if they can answer those questions well, from a Christian perspective, you could do it. So once we kind of got that around, our, our, our heads around that part, then we said, okay, what kinds of things now can we support those uh, uh, those values? How can we how can we teach them? And so we started collecting. I'm going to get it out here so I can make reference to it. Uh, we started collecting uh, information about each of those values, and uh, um, kind of putting them together. And we decided that we would. Uh, uh, you know, our original thought was to kind of create boxes for each of these values, and for each value we would have this box, and then each of the teachers could take the boxes that we had, and they could, you know, put stuff into it. And, and you know, one of the boxes was defining this value uh, from a child's perspective. Uh, you know what? You know what does honesty mean? What does justice mean? Or you know some of these values that we hold, but but what does that mean to a third grader or a, a, a teenager or a different age group? You know, so so we thought well, you know as we come up with good good uh, examples of that, good definitions of that from a child standpoint of view, we can. Uh, uh, we'll kind of throw that into the box, so to speak. 
And then artwork. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've uh, uh, enjoyed going through magazines and stuff and looking for, for pictures that you can use in your class. Well, you know, we thought, well, wouldn't it be neat if we could collect artwork to teach these values, uh, both the right and the wrong rollout of it? And, and, you know, we would just do that. Well, we realized that some of these values were very, very hard to find illustrations of. And uh, we found a, a young man who, who liked to draw and stuff like that. And so we said, well, draw us a drawing for each of these values, you know. And he came up with concepts and stuff. And uh, they've been quite popular. I've had several people want to borrow these in order to, to, to uh, illustrate that. And then music. What about songs that, that refer to these values? Talk about them. We, we started collecting uh, songs to do it. And I hope as you go through these different ones that I'm mentioning, I hope that you'll catch the vision and not think about this as a fixed asset. But this is a box that you can add to. When you find another good song that illustrates this, this one, you throw it in the box. And, and when you find a good picture that can illustrate this, uh, throw it in the box. And uh, also life applications. You know, what does it mean to be unselfish? Give me some life applications because kids are tangible. You know, they 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 think in concrete. They don't think in, you know, abstract uh, definitions. So, you know, honesty means, you know, to do this. You know, when somebody, uh, you know, when you find something that doesn't belong to you or whatever. What does honesty mean? What does uh, 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 the these different things mean? So we began to collect life applications and some of these have more life applications than others. The challenge, again, this is not intended to be a fixed resource asset. I hope that you will vision this as uh, boxes that you can add to for your own thing because Hopefully, uh, you, you'll be uh, doing these kinds of things well into the future and, and be looking for your own ways of, of teaching these values. So this is just kind of a, a starting place. And then we collected Bible passages that uh, referred to the values. And there's more. Again, this is just a start. And uh, spirit prophecy quotations that, that uh, illustrated or reinforced the value. And then reinforcing stories, uh, stories from all the Bible books. Uh, sorry, all the, uh, the the story books that we had. You know, the the Uncle Arthur's bedtime stories, or you know, any story books we could find that had illustrations of these different things. In fact, this one uh, was such a challenge that in the end, uh, we actually made our own basal readers with uh, with the uh, stories in them because we wanted to teach the values that uh, that we wanted Adventist kids to to know and so we made the the Daystar readers I don't know at some point point you can show them the the Daystar readers and those were intended specifically to teach those values those Adventist values uh, so so that's kind of the reinforcing stories here and and to 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 pick it up on that and then student activities, kinds of things that we can do in order to, uh, you know, stick stick the values, and uh, and then links to the curriculum. Now, links to the curriculum is, is kind of the knee jerk integration of faith and learning. You know, you're you're teaching this subject area, and you think, oh, there's got to be a Bible text that illustrate this, or there's got to be a, you know, a a, a story that uh, in, in in the Bible or somewhere that will illustrate this uh, this lesson that we have, so uh, that's the most common one. And I I think uh, we gave a few illustrations of that. But this and again, I think you guys are so creative. Uh, you know what is here is just kind of starting down the road <laughs> for this. Uh, but but what I'm saying by these illustrations here, by these different things, what I'm trying to tell you is. That, that there are lots of ways that you can go about integration, faith, and learning, not just links to the curriculum. There, there's lots of uh, ways to fill it out, to, to make it interesting. 
And then other resources, this may be another, a really good book on the subject, or a video, or, or a uh, Your Story Hour uh, radio program that teaches this value, or wh whatever. Uh, so you want to look at those. And then finally, evaluation. Um, how did you find the evaluation questions? Did, did you look at those evaluation questions? Oh, okay. Let me explain to you what they are, just so you understand. Um, there, there was uh, uh, some years ago, many years ago, <laughs> a, um, a, a non-Adventist educator who uh, spoke, uh, Simon and Roth, I'm talking about the values clarification, uh, uh, that had uh, some really interesting new thoughts on what makes a value. And they said, a value is not a real value unless you choose from alternatives, uh, unless you choose it freely. Somebody's not forcing you to do this, you know, or to, to believe this and so on. If you choose it from alternatives, you choose it freely. Uh, and, and they had about seven different elements that were necessary. If you really value something, you're, you're going you're gonna to prize it. You're going to value it enough to speak up and publicly affirm it. If, 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 somebody, uh, if somebody is talking against it and you're in the group and so on, if it's a real value to you, you're not going to be quiet about that. You can say, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I don't agree with that. You know, uh, you're going to say something. So values uh, are that way, and uh, you know, and so on and so forth. They have a, a number of these different things. Well, what I did was I made, and, and these questions would be different according to what age the student would be, you know, because you, you'd have different questions related to that. So based upon what it means to be a, a value uh, for an elementary and so on like that, we made some questions, and the questions are not for the students. The questions are for the teachers <laughs> to ask the teacher, you know, uh, uh, is this subject being clarified? Are these values being really becoming values or we just talk about it? One of the things that I'm sure you've heard and learned, and, and certainly the United States learned this when they were teaching drugs about drug education and so on, is that just because you know something is right, it doesn't make it a value. You know, they spent all this time, millions of dollars in the United States, training kids all about drugs and what was wrong with drugs and, and uh, you know, how they're harmful and so on. And all the kids could identify the drugs. They could all do this and so on. They knew all about them, all the different kinds and, and stuff, and what it did for your brain and all the stuff. But the, the amount of drug use in the United States was steady or going up. <laughs> in other words, it had no impact. It was not impacting their lives. So they realized, well, just telling them about it is not enough. And we make that same mistake when we teach values to our kids, even Adventist values. We, we suggest that because I told them that this is the Ten Commandments and God said, you know, that you know, okay, well, then they, you know, they know and they're going to do it. But that's not, that's not the way people work. Uh, values go beyond that. And, and Roth uh, and Simon, uh, they helped us understand that if this is going to be owned by somebody, there are certain things that has to happen. And, and, and uh, we can help them own it when we can answer those questions, when we gave them opportunities uh, to go through the process uh, so that they can own it. And, and, uh, and, and so in, in teaching values, uh, uh, those are key questions and, and they can help you. And you can make your own up you know, as you go along. Once you see the, the pattern of that, you can ask yourself, what are, what are we doing to help the kids really uh, uh, own the value and not just know about it, you know, because it's not enough to know about it. They have to come to the place where they really own it. That's the problem we have uh, in graduate school. You know, all the, all the graduate school uh, students, and, and I was at a secular education conference where we were talking about this, 
and they said about 60 to 80 percent of the graduate school students, college students and graduate school students, were cheating. You know, and they all knew it. The teachers knew it. Everybody knew it. And they all knew it was wrong. They, knew, they all knew it was unethical. But they didn't own it enough to not to do it because they could get away with it. So, you know, we can ask ourselves the same question. This is good values clarification uh, question. You can ask yourself, if you knew for sure, if you knew for sure, nobody, nobody, nobody would ever know, would you watch television on Sabbath? You know, would you, I, you know, I'm not talking about Hope Channel. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, other stuff. You know, uh, you can go on. You, you have your own things, you know, what, you know, take something that uh, nobody would see you taking or, you know, you can fill in the blanks. If you knew for sure, nobody ever would find it out, you know. So uh, helping people think about those values, make those decisions about what, those decisions have to be made before you're in that position. <coughs> And that's what we want to have people begin to clarify their values. Is, you know, is this value just because I don't want to get caught? I don't want to get punished. Uh, I don't want people to laugh at me. You know, what, what are the driving forces for these values? And for kids at different level, the pressures for these things are different. You know, there's different kinds of, of, of levels. And we need to understand that as we go about it. So that's what these different boxes are for. And um, you may even want to add your own boxes extra. Uh, these are the ones that, uh, that I've suggested here. Okay? I'm interested at this time in whether any of you have had that similar feeling that you have textbooks in your, in your classes, but integration of faith and learning is not part of what is written in the textbook. Do any of you have to teach subjects that you don't have the textbooks that present a Seventh-day Adventist point of view? How many of you have that condition? The rest of you have textbooks that have the Seventh-day Adventist viewpoint in them? All That's of great. Them? Well, I know, I know South America wow. has done a wonderful job. That they, South America has, uh, has, in fact, they sell them even to, to secular schools because yeah. they're Adventists, but there's a lot of countries that don't have it. Well, yeah. some of these people aren't raising their hands, and I know that they have, don't have textbooks <laughs> in their countries that reflect Seventh-day Adventist beliefs. The people from China, I haven't seen a Chinese book yet that had a Seventh-day Adventist perspective in it. And some of you, even from Philippines, don't have uh, that point of view. And I'm looking at Russia and several others around the world, they, in Africa. They don't have textbooks that have. Seems a, to be a common problem. Yeah, yeah. so it is. So if, oh, you were going to go ahead and ask. Well, I was, I was going to ask another question about um, your preferred future. If, if there was a tremendous need, and there's no doubt that there is, and you've taken a lot of time to produce some really uh, good materials, very colorful, um, lots of hours put into it, and it's online. And not only that, the price is a wonderful price. It's, it's very inexpensive. It's free. I mean, you can't beat that. We, we didn't start out with that idea. We thought, oh, this is great. We're going to sell these books and so on. But, you know, after a while, we sold a few of the books and so on. And finally, we said, shoot, let's just make it available to everybody. Anybody, any Adventist that wants this, let them, let them have it. Before you ask that question, can we ask him about what are the components? What, okay, what surely. What make up the yeah. program? What is in the program? That's good. Okay. okay. We have everything here. Yeah. Um, what we did next, after we developed this, uh, this chart of values and so on with this information in it, the next thing we went to is, okay, how do we transfer this to the curriculum? And, and to me, that is a really critical question. 
Um, there is a saying that, uh, and I, in fact, I heard that this week, you know, if you don't put it on the calendar, it probably won't, w probably won't happen. Well, for educators, we would say, if you don't have it in the lesson plan, <laughs> you know, or the course outline, you know, then it probably won't happen. And so uh, the theory that, that we worked on was, is that the decisions, the planning for integration of faith and learning has to be as intentional, it has to be as planned as all the other education components. And you know how, how we, we go through the, the work and you're learning about that in, in your curriculum classes and so on. How do we go about successfully teaching this content? Well, we, you know, we're very good at that. We spend a lot of time on that, but we have to be that same kind of intentional. We have to be the same systematic planning for our integration of faith and learning as we do that. It can't be, oh, I'm gonna teach this subject today, I do my lesson plan, I do all of that thing, and then, oh, what Bible text shall I read for them this morning, you know, maybe I can make some kind of, you know. That's not gonna do it. I, I mean, we've done that for years, but, but you know, we're, we're really turning it around backwards, aren't we? Because that's the most important thing, <laughs> even if they don't get the curriculum as well. That's still the most important thing because that's salvation, you know. So for Adventists, this is really important, and we have to be intentional. So, you know, core, the next step for us is how do we move it into a curriculum? And let me just say this. Uh, for me, and I heard this from Dr. Ng, uh, G.T. Ng, you know, he pre preached Sabbath and so on like that. He, we, were, we had a, a talk with him today with some of the professors and stuff, and he emphasized this again, and it's in the book here. Um, you know, you can have all the methods in the world, but if you are not connected to God, if you're not having a spiritual experience, if you're not living a witness, all this stuff is shallow mechanics. So the first, first, first rule, you know, of integration of faith is to be the godly person that, that will speak of, of your Christian witness um, every day, every way. Uh, that is the core of it, because uh, no matter how many great methods we have, if that is missing, it's not there. So you have to have your personal devotions. You have to have your Bible study and your experience with God. You have to have, you know, have that core. And, and uh, I would say forget all of this stuff and emphasize that if that's not there, because that's number one job. So I, let me just emphasize that. So, and, and we do have a few pages dealing with that in the first. And I just want to, uh, I don't want to belittle that in any way because, uh, um, you know, the spiritual life is, is core. Then for each subject area, we, um, uh, we talk about several ways, I think there's eight different ways that you can go about putting integration of faith into your curriculum. And so what we suggest is prayerfully, after you, you know, you know, prepared yourself spiritually and so on, you sit down with your course outline, your curriculum and so on, and you say, okay, on this day or in this week, how am I going to communicate the Adventist values that I want to have there? And as you go about thinking about that, you've got this toolbox around you. You've got 100 values on the rebirth. And you've got these other uh, eight different methods, so to speak. And of course, there's many others, and they will, you know, They've been talking about this all the time, and you'll hear many others. But the idea is that you take your course outline, and then you embed it systematically in there with these different choices. 
And, and what we've given you here in, in the, uh, what do we call it, handbook to assist teachers in making their classes achieve the ideals of Adventist education. We've given you a few examples of it, but they fall into a, a category, several categories. And, and we drew from a number of wonderful sources on this, and this is not all original stuff. Uh, you know, we, we drew from as many places as we could. One of the things that we did right at the beginning is the philosophy, the Christian, the Adventist philosophy as it relates to that, um, uh, that discipline area. Uh, what is the rationale for Adventists to teach art? What is the rationale for Adventists to teach history? What, why would an Adventist want to teach history? Why would an Adventist want to teach art? What is the connection between Adventists and art or, or mathematics or any of the subject areas? That's worthy of reflection. And we give you kind of a start at it. Don't, don't canonize what we've written here. You know what I mean, canonize. Don't make it like a, the Bible and say, well, this is the answer. No, you have to struggle with this also. You say, why would we teach this subject area? Do we do this just because the world teaches this, just because they say this, so on? Or is there an Adventist reason why we would want to teach this subject? And what is, what is the Adventist perspective on this subject area? Because that, that is very important. That drives you for the whole class. Uh, and, and so we gave a sample there just to get to whet your appetite to, to think what is the foundation of it. So one of the things that you could do when you're teaching uh, a class and you want to integrate it, maybe toward the first of that time, you may want to say, um, maybe you ask, why are Adventists teaching this class in, uh, uh, in Philippine history? Why, why are Adventists teaching this class? Why is it important for an Adventist to know the subject? You know, why, why skip it? You know, if you're teaching evolution, and sometimes you have to do that as part of the thing, you know, at least what they believe, even if you don't believe it, you know, why would an Adventist want you to understand that as opposed to creation? So, so getting that foundation for, for the thing, it'd be one way that you could integrate faith. And as you talk about that, they may ask questions. They may, uh, you know, depending on what age you're dealing with, you know, uh, that would be thing. And uh, yeah, so the philosophy of, of art from an Adventist perspective, the rationale for why we would teach it. And then the, the next one, the third one I would have on the list would be uh, creating a spiritual atmosphere. And, and I can't overemphasize this. Sometimes kids um, experience uh, integration of faith and learning even without words because they feel it, environment. When they come into our classroom, is this a safe place? Do they know that people are praying for me in this classroom, that if if I have a problem, I can share it with this group because I know they will understand and they'll pray for me. Uh, I know that people won't laugh at me in this place if I make a mistake, that they will hold up my hands. If, if I have trouble, this is a community that I can trust and I can, I can feel good about. Are we creating that spiritual? And when we say spiritual atmosphere, we're not saying, well, I have a nice bulletin board with a picture of Jesus on it. You know, I'm one of those who believe every single classroom ought to have a picture. Well, not only your national leader in there. I'd like to see you have a picture of Jesus in every classroom. It doesn't have to be just a mug shot. I mean, you could have different action shots, you know, of him in different ministries and so on. But, you know, having that focal point uh, is, is critical to me, as, uh, as well as a national flag and some of the other things that we typically have in a classroom trash can and whiteboards and so on. Yeah. So creating that atmosphere. How can we create an atmosphere? And I think that's worth praying about and talking about. What kinds of things can we say when we introduce our class, when we bring people in the class? What kind of an atmosphere? I think talking about that to the class. This is 
our spiritual safe place, kids. This class is a place where <clears throat> we can ask questions and we can share and know that this is a place where we're among friends, where this is a God place. This is where the Holy Spirit is going to be, creating that atmosphere in the classroom so that they love to come. This is the place where they will come when things are not going well. They're going to find safety and support in this place. And the teacher plays an important role in that. And when they feel that, they will want that the rest of their lives. And let's be honest, sometimes their homes are not providing this. I'm sad to say, sometimes their homes are not providing this. And so we play a, a, such an important role for these kids. So um, let's make the most of that one. Okay, the next one is learn, learning approaches. Um, Oh, identify and uh, rewarding students who demonstrate. Okay, that's the one. Next one is mission of the church. I think that that every subject area, if we can help children see experiences in this subject area where people are using this information to help further the mission of the church. Does the church need statisticians, mathematicians, and so on? Yes. Yes. Think about the Adventist health study. Think about, you know, uh, research that we're doing here without the, you know, people like uh, RJ and, and uh, uh, Brother Sam and, and, you know, these people. Yes, the church urgently needs those things. And these people, the children, when they, uh, when they see the models, and maybe we start... With the smaller children, we give the illustrations maybe from their family, maybe from the people that are in the child's world. You can't talk about, you know, uh, Christian you know, philosophers or people in history to, to a, a, a small child. You talk about, you know, the Sabbath school teacher, you know, or you talk about that. You look for how that subject area can tie in to fulfilling the mission of church. Someday, maybe, if, if you study hard in the area of, of English, you can serve the church because the church needs English teachers and give them some illustrations. They need people who are good writers for our Adventist news or for our magazines. We need people, you know. and. and Give them the vision. Tell them stories of people who, who uh, live out the mission of the church uh, using the, the, this discipline area. And, and that integrates it very nicely. They can, and, and if you run out of Adventist illustrations, use Christian examples you know, of great Christian leaders, Martin Luther or you know, uh, you know, Galileo or you know, uh, other, other ones who we know are illustrations. So, Giving Christian examples uh, is a thing. And there's some illustrations in here that you can do. And this is Christian contributors. Yeah, I just say mission. Yeah, mission of the church and then Christian contributors. I'll go fast here. And then the rebirth, you know. If all else fails, you go to rebirth and say, okay, today we're going to talk about the Trinity or something, you know. And, and uh you know, just as, a, as your spiritual lesson. Or you may talk about forgiveness. Or you talk about, you know, repentance or, you know, whatever the value might be. It, this gives you. I found, without a list like this, I go to the, to the favorite five. Uh, if, if I said, okay, right now, everybody sit down and write five values to me, for, for me. Chances are we would have people all writing the same, well, there would not be a huge variation of what we write down because we just need your go to our favorite four or five values when we think about values, we think about those. So this kind of helps us get out of that and to think about other values. Let me also say that the rebirth value is very helpful because it is all written in, in positive terms. It's not saying don't, uh, don't uh, um, 
steel. It doesn't say don't uh, graffiti the walls. It, 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 it talks about the positive side about what God uh, would have us do. And by the way, you will hear the same terms, the same value terms talked about in secular context as, as society values. So what is the difference between honesty in the secular world and honesty to Adventist? That is a good question to think about because it is different. We do these things for different reasons <laughs> and, and, and we've tried in rebirth to put all the values through the eyes of a Christian. And they all have a value statement. I choose to be unselfish because God is unselfish, you know, or, or whatever the, the one might be. So thinking about the value, not just from the value, but what the Christian value is, is worthy to think about. So, uh, yeah, so if, if you haven't already picked one from these others, pick a rebirth one. And, uh, and stick it into your curriculum. And what, what I'm trying to envision for you here is as you go through the curriculum, as you go through your course outline, I should say, as you're going down from, from week to week and you're looking at your curriculum and you're thinking about which of these different subject areas will support, yeah, will be the right value for me to teach at that time. Uh, sometimes you may be drawing from rebirth, sometimes you may be doing links to the curriculum. Sometimes you may be talking about spiritual atmosphere in your classroom, having exercises or games and so on that, that teach those things. Uh, in the art class, you may be, you know, uh, drawing pictures, using your skills as drawing, but to illustrate a Bible story or uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, these things, your, your course outline is beginning to fill in. You know, your subject areas is beginning to be fill in. And, uh, you know, uh, again, this gives you variety, gives you a, a, a choices of what you can do to, to fill in. You need to be intentional, though. It needs to be part of your curriculum. Uh, but don't do it mechanically. It's got to be drawn from spirit-led planning. Uh, okay, and then let me just finish up Adventist content. I'm a strong believer. I'm a strong believer in the fact that our curriculum, as, as great as it, is, as it is, developed by the great educators of our world and history, uh, they don't cover everything that an Adventist should cover. <laughs> and if we're using public textbooks, we have to ask ourselves, what is the content? Not just integrating faith with the subject areas that's already there from the government, but we want to say, what is the Adventist content that I want to add to that content to make this class Adventist? So that, that when, we're, when we're teaching evolution, there may be some things that we want to add as an Adventist to the curriculum to, to talk about the evidence consistent with creation. We want to, maybe when we're talking about literature, we may want to say some things about how we choose literature that is consistent with our values. How do we choose um, maybe what media we watch? Um, and, and what is the content that is important for this grade level, for this subject area, that an Adventist would want to uh, see included? You know, when we talk about literature, for instance, um, you know, there's, there's many great pieces that, that uh, the secular world would say, every child ought to know this story and the lesson this teaches. And I most of the time agree with those. They're, they're pretty good stories and they teach good lessons and so on like that. Uh, I don't have a fight with every one of those. Some of them I do. But I also think, wow, Adventists have, has, uh, our Christians have great literature too. I mean, Pilgrim's Progress, you know, it's a it's great fiction. I mean, fabulous fiction, you know. 
And, and there, there are, are excellent uh, stories that teach you good values and so on. We, we need to inject into the secular curriculum our Adventist content. And that's this one here. So when you're going through integration of faith, it's not just matching the curriculum. At some point, you want to stop and say, what is there in this curriculum that we need to add as a Seventh-day Adventist for this grade level, for this subject area? And, and believe me, when you really seriously think about that, God can really bless you, and you can really find some great stuff. And I wish there was some way that we could, we could network to share all these wonderful things that I know teachers are doing all over the world, you know, so that we can fill these boxes with everybody's ideas, you know, so that we have richer education. So I'm, I'm very clear, close to the end here. Um, yeah, and then, then we have uh, illustrations of these, you know, for the different grade levels and the different subject areas. Uh, that you can look. If you want to see at least an example of how somebody has done this where we actually have a curriculum and, and what the value we're going to teach and then what kinds of things that we might put to, to make it work, just to get you started uh, on this. Um, uh, yeah, I think a good assignment would be for them to pick a course outline uh, for, uh, uh, for some subject area. And, and, and do a month worth of, uh, uh, in that course outline, that given course outline, how would they integrate faith using all these wonderful tools and the, the things that they're learning in class? How would you go about you know, actually doing it? Because that's the work that in the end you're gonna have to do, right? You know, when, when push comes to shove, you know, that's what you wanna do. <laughs> we have them do that, but we have them do it with a lesson plan. Yes, you know, right, that's what I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah, I still if I were sitting and didn't know too much about this, I still don't know what components this program has. Is it just the chart? How many things does it have that I can look at? Okay. Uh, uh, when you go on the web page uh, or, or when you look at the, these things, there's basically two components. One is the, the flip chart, which has the, the, uh, the chart of values, this one here, that are organized uh, uh, by the different uh, value value sections. Now, is you know. this the same as this? Yes, okay. yes. The only difference is is that the first book only had uh, the the pictures on it, and and the content was over in another book. Later on, we put all the content uh, in the book. So the difference between this one and that one is that this one just has the values on the front and the the sort of the first page. So, like, uh, you can show them with the, with the joy. I don't think they even make this chart anymore, but I wish they would. Uh, uh, this, like this. But on this one, it also has the, the thing. The difference is, the con this was to support this, you know, with, with all of those uh, different, you know, the, the music and the art and the, you know, the different applications. On this one, we put it on the back side of this. So everything that was here is on the back side of this. But on the web page, it's all together. So when you click on it, so on. So when you go to the web page, you'll say on the right side, we ought to put it up for him. Uh, on, the, on the right side, uh, uh, there'll be the, the flip chart. And on the, uh, sorry, on the left side, there'll be the flip chart. On the right side, you will have these, uh, these handbooks. And there's, there's a handbook basically for all the subject areas, well, most of the subject areas in elementary, and then there's another whole set for the high school. Another whole set for the high school. So you can actually go and see samples of, of these things rolled out uh, with examples in, in high school. So you so basically two components? Those are the two components, yes. It is the, the handbook. Uh, which one of the subjects in the handbook is rebirth uh, when you want to look for a value and talk about a value. And the other one is, is the flip chart with the value and, and the support for that value with the different uh, uh, ideas. Here. I have it up here. Is this okay. what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, uh, can we project it? Yes, I'm going to project okay. it if you want to hold it here. All right. 
Thank you. Are we plugged in here? Well, it's, you know, you have to hold your mouth right. You should go on without any problem. Let me do this. Let me take it off. This, if, if you want to write it down, this is the www.ssd.org. It's on their syllabus. Okay. It's in their All right. syllabus. Uh, forward slash rebirth. So yes. So Arnold, why is this not working? goes through the CD survey. Uh, we did make a CD, but I don't know if it's still available. Okay. So, okay. Well, feel free to duplicate that. Yeah. If you want to share it with other people, go ahead. But it's, it's also online. I don't. I usually yes. just plug it in and it comes up, but I don't know. Well, it probably is telling me it's time to sit down. What? You want to come and look at it? You know more about these things. You don't know how. I don't know how to grab from yeah. over there. Did you grab from over there? This is this the one? I have no idea. Uh, there you go. Others I have not Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now I can't see it, but I'll stand up over here. So on the left side is the chart. If you click on that, it'll expand that, and it, you can go to uh, see all the... Here? Yeah. So why don't we just do that, and then you can come back. Just click on the chart. Yeah, see if I can get there. Yeah. Yeah, click on that, and let's see what happens. Yeah, so we uh, come over here, and then these are the questions, the seven great questions, which are basically questions relating to religious or ethical. Yeah. Yeah, you guys. And then, just... then go ahead and chart, uh, click on the, well, is that back to the chart? Yes. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, okay, here we go. And then you can click on any of the subjects area. Let's go over to relationship and we'll talk about kindness or something like that. Yeah, or respect. Yeah. Okay. So here, here we are. Uh, and then, so notice the statement at the first, because I value others as those whom Christ created and redeemed, I choose to treat them as I would like to be treated. So it's kind of a positive statement. So it's not enough just to say today we're talking about kindness. We're actually moving in the direction of them saying, I would say, now I want you kids to think about what that says and think and don't say it, just don't read it with me, but I want you to think, is that really how I feel? Is that really what I want to say? If you really want to say that, I invite you to say it. Don't say it just because your neighbor's saying it. You know, say it if you really believe it, you know. And so, you know, maybe that toward the close, you could do something like that. Getting them to choose. What is the alternative to this? Selfishness? <laughs> You know, uh, you know, bullying, uh, you know, we can talk about those things. And then notice the, the different things down here. You can click on definition and it'll give you a definition. Click on art and it'll give you art. Click on music, so on and so forth. And again, I'm sorry that, that there's so few illustrations for you to use. I wish that you could take it and add your own pictures and so on. The difficulty is, is if I find a good picture of this, it's probably copyrighted and I can't put it here. But you can collect it, <laughs> and when you give the illustration, you can, you can use your pictures. So in some ways, you've got your own power. <laughs> but uh, just getting it started, uh, these are the things. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, that's half of it. We need to go back and get the other half. Okay, where do we go now? Uh, I want to answer his question. Okay, yeah, I keep going back. You said the growing in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it's under which one? Uh, we the last one. The last one from the okay, one more back. One no, more. No, no, no. Oh, growing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes, yes. Not, Do you know why? Because it's <laughs> this is the This is the ad. By the way, those are the 27 fundamental yes. beliefs. Yeah. 28. You know, maybe you figured that out. And this growing in Christ, we had to add because... Uh -huh. Because they, the general conference voted another fundamental belief, you know, but we haven't, we we didn't 
fill fill in that thing, but you, you, you can fill in. fill it in because mm -hmm. you know I, you can go to the SDA website and and look what the value is, and you can you can do it. You know. <laughs> okay, so go up and click the back arrow. I don't know what happened to the mouse. Yes. Oh, okay, way up there in the back. Uh, up there, yeah, uh, back arrow. Okay, good. Well, yeah, one. You can go one more. One more back. Yeah, one more back. There, yeah. Okay, and then on the other side over here, that's where these uh, these uh, handbooks are. Okay, why don't you click on that just so you can theory? see it? Yes, yeah, subject. Yeah, handbook. So you can see the choices you have if you're emphasizing elementary or one of these other things. You can click on that and look at those or the high school uh, ones there. And and believe me, folks, please understand this is uh, this is you know this is not the answer. This is a, a way to move you toward developing your own uh, values. It, it's getting you started down the road. And. And again, you can see here, when you're making your course outline, you can do philosophy or rationale, you can do spiritual atmosphere, you can do mission to the church, Christian contribution, rebirth, Adventist com context. We didn't talk about links to the class. Uh, yeah, so here, uh, basically, this is what's inside for that Adventist content. You can read the questions, identify giving Adventist perspectives, you know, issues. And, uh, yeah. These give you ideas. Go back one. Miss Jed. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, way up in the corner in the, the... Oh, you mean here? Way up there. Click back. Yeah. And then then links to topics. There's an il illustration of links. Here. And then, yeah, and then resources. Uh, are, those are all the, the, the eight different... Suggestions, and I would like you to add nine and ten and your own, you know, things. Because when you go about doing that, when you go about developing your own approach, then you can. This is your 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 pocket of of uh, of solutions, you know. When I want to do integration of faith, which one shall I do, you know, or how shall I go about doing that, you know? Uh, these will give you cues, and there's many more from this. You know, these will give you cues about how you can set about to uh, to integrate your faith and and they just uh, get you started down the road Dr. Green, any maybe we have have questions do any of you have any questions you'd like to ask Dr. Gupta there's two Ebenezer oh I see three okay. Ebenezer you can go first go ahead if it's one of the three things I know, I'll, I'll answer it. <laughs> it is a good presentation, but in my country, we don't have many Seventh-day Adventist teachers in our Seventh-day Adventist schools. In my country, there are, I would say, just 1% are Seventh-day Adventists. Wow. And so how are we, or what are we to do to be able to introduce this in our schools? when we don't have many of our teachers being seven-day Adventists, but it is a seven-day Adventist school. Mm. Okay. So. It is because um, we don't pay well, you know, and so they don't come. But we have many seven-day seven -day Adventist teachers. So what can we do to resolve um. this? Yeah, that's a big question. It's not directly related to integration, faith, and learning, but maybe I can tie it. Um, you know, I struggle with that same thing, and uh, I I prepared a couple books uh, that you can get at SSD. I think they're still available. Um, that that really talk about um, what makes Adventist education. You know. I, what is the name of those things? They, they have the black cover, you know, with the orange thing. Um, teaching the Adventist Way, I think, it was. Uh, teaching the Adventist Way, book one and two. And there, there's other very good books, but part of the reason I put those things together was because 
I thought, you know, it would be good for our Adventist people, Adventist teachers, to think about, you know, what is the Adventistness of my teaching? You know, what are the core things of my Adventist teaching? And then there's a second section, uh, so on, that really basically goes through some of the fundamentals that deal with Adventists, that deal with integration of faith and learning. It talks about, you know, would Jesus give an F, you know, and talk about, you know, grading and, and uh, so on. And these were, most of these were taken from the Journal of Adventist Education. Yeah. And they were they were they were drawn from the best uh, of the uh, the articles on that. So I think that saying saying to the non Adventist teachers, look, you're coming here to teach in Adventist school. I know you're not an Adventist, and we don't expect you to be an Adventist, although we wish you were. Uh, but if you're going to teach in this environment, you need to at least understand where where we're coming from so that you can be consistent with it and so on. Would like to have you read this, or like to have you, you go through this. And we, from time to time, will talk about it and answer questions about it, but I want you to read it because this will help you understand where, what the mission of this institution is and where we are going or what we want to accomplish. I think that would be a first step. And then in terms of integration of faith and learning, I would do it on the simplest level and say, when you talk about this subject, read this Bible text or this quote from Ellen White. When you talk about this subject, you know, I mean, help them, you know, with simple connections that they can do it. If you drive them to the scriptures, that'll always help, you know. <laughs> so, you know, encourage them to make some kind of connection there. Just say, the mission of this institution requires that we integration, integration, integrate faith. And if you want to be a teacher here, we need to, to, to look for a way to do that. This is the, the things to do it. People understand that, you know. If they go to work for IBM, there's certain things IBM people would expect them to do, or Google, or, you know, whatever it is. And so you can say, if you want to work for us, you know, this is a mission, this is who we are. Uh, if you want to work here, you, you, know, you need to help engage in these kind of things. That's, that's a poor substitute for Adventist teachers, I know. But it may be all we can do when we don't have the other option. I think my question is, why would you have a Seventh-day Adventist school and not have Seventh-day Adventist teachers? To me, those are opposite things. You yes. can't put them together. I mean, why would you do that? The only reason I could think of that you would do it is because you're making money off of the school. But that's not a good reason for having a Seventh-day Adventist school. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you can explain it to me. I, I would like to know. But that's a very interesting. Uh, because um, in where I've been, most of the time when we talk about issues like that, it's should we hire one who is not a Seventh-day Adventist or two? And the stories that we know, and we've conducted some studies of, of schools where they have uh, hired Seventh-day Adventists to teach, say, physical therapy, and they're non-Adventists. Something happens to the, the atmosphere of the school. Yes. And so um, why would you want everybody like that? Yeah, that just es escapes me why we would have the... Uh, philosophy, the, the mission that we have, and then not hire the people that can deliver that. See, that's a real dichotomy, it seems to me. Certainly. So, Maybe we can take one. I know it's way past Yeah, three, but it's, it's way here. past some of their bedtime, I think. <laughs> <laughs>
day is not enough, like mm -hmm. first day and second day and there's demonstration and all this stuff. But how about this one? I, I see that this is very important. If we have, where can we avail? And if we don't have, do we have any plans of like training. providing training, this training mm -hmm. to all teachers? Because honestly, sir, I was I'm a product of an Adventist institution, even if I was an Adventist before. Elementary to college. However, this is still something new to me. Mm -hmm. Like you integrate, because in grade one, two, three, and four, I was thought the evolution was correct in an Adventist school. So, do we have these training centers, or do we have plans of providing this kind of stuff? You're sitting in one. <laughs> I mean, for all the teachers, like, you know, like for local churches. You mean well, not just a class you yeah, take at the university? Well, if I could respond, uh, when when we first came out with this, uh, we had a training video. I think SSD still has it somewhere that was uh, provided. We we gave instruction and training to all the education directors and encouraged them to train the conferences and the the people on down. But you know, as in all things, you know, um, time moves on. Uh, sometimes the people that got the training, you know, are in different jobs and so on, uh, doing different things, and uh, people, um, you know, are left with it without the training. And I'm not there anymore, so I don't have any line authority to do it unless somebody invites me, like today, you know, to come and talk about it. Um, in fact, if you want to know the truth, I had to beg SSD to keep this on their website so that people could see it because they had erased it and just done away and nobody noticed, nobody cared. And I went back <laughs> and, and said, well, you know, there's maybe somebody, you know, that may want to see that sometime. Would you mind putting it back up for us? So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, people go on, uh, you know, other people have different values, they have their different programs and, and stuff, and so this is not the emphasis right now. It would be uh, a good research, action research, to go and train some people and show them how to do yeah. it. Add the, add the other points that you're learning in this class, you know, the many other good stuff, and develop integration uh, and training. training, yeah. Yeah, we, we do know how to deliver this sort of thing. It's, it's fairly well known, well researched. It's just that we don't follow it. And so <laughs> we can talk to you about that. Yeah, it's a missing piece of staff development, just yeah. like there's a missing piece of integration of faith and learning. And we have to believe in it, you know, we have to own it, you know. And uh, it's sort of like we were talking about with drugs, you know. It wasn't enough for me just to tell them, you know, what about this, you know, people had to really. Uh, and uh, we probably missed part of that. <laughs> okay, I think it's time for us to let both Dr. Guptal and the class have a break. Thank you okay. so yeah. much for being yeah. so patient.